Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Greg Anthony here, and glad you're back on the Investigative Journal on this February 16th, 2017 day on our calendar. And let me give you my Jesuit quote of the day. This comes from American historian James Parton. He made this quote in 1855, and I think it still applies today. He says, quote, There are still men and women about the country who will tell you with grim gravity that, If you trace up Freemasonry through all of its orders and secret societies, you will come up with the grand tip-top head mason of the world. You will then discover that this dreaded individual is none other than the chief and the general of the Society of Jesus, and they're one in the same person. Okay, so what he's saying is at the top of this pyramid of control, Now, all of the secret societies, it is the Jesuit general who is at the tip top of of this uh, secret organization, basically a shadow government. And this list, and let me give you why I think this is true, because the Vatican, Rome, including the Jesuit order, they're the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator in the world, and the biggest property owner in existence. Rome is greater possessor of material riches than any other single institution, corporation, bank, uh, giant trust, government, or state in the whole globe, or in the whole flat earth, whatever you subscribe to. The Pope, as the visible ruler of this huge amassment of wealth, is consequently the richest individual in the 20th century. No one can realistically assess how much they are worth in terms of billions and trillions of dollars. Now, this uh, gives me the makes me make the conclusion that the Jesuits, the Jesuit generals, at the top of all these organizations. Let's list a few: oh, the so-called Illuminati, the Council on Foreign Relations, international bankers, the Mafia, the Club of Rome, Opus Dei the Masons, and the New Age movement, etc., etc., etc. But, you know, there's a little bit of confusion going on here, because if the above is true, then who is the most powerful man on earth today? Because for the first time in history, we have a Jesuit pope. We also have a Jesuit general named... Father, uh, what's his name now? Uh, Father Nicholas, okay. And uh, so who is the top guy? And what even makes it more confusing is that we, this Pope, uh, Adolfo Nicholas, okay, the Jesuit general Adolfo Nicholas, took over for Father Hans Kolvenbach, who resigned. That's, That's unusual as well. So we have two Jesuit generals out there. And then we have a Jesuit Pope. So, who really is at the top of the pyramid now? And does it make any difference? And did these two ever meet and talk? Well, I uncovered this. They met uh, during, I can't remember exactly what year, not long ago. And here's what the Jesuit general said when he met the other Jesuit general. Is he the Jesuit general or the white pope? Or are they both the same now? It's quite confusing. But anyway, he said this, At the personal invitation of Pope Francis, I went to the Santa Marta house. He was at the entrance and received me with the usual Jesuit embrace. We had a few pictures taken at his request, and at my apologies for not keeping protocol, he insisted that I treat him like any other Jesuit. So I did not have to worry about addressing him as your holiness or holy father. You know, from that quote, and I got a little more here, it seems to me that the white pope, 
who's now a Jesuit, is bowing down to the black pope, who's Adolfo Nicholas. So is he the head? Sounds like it. I offered him all of our Jesuit resources, because in his new position, he's going to need counsel, thinking, persons like us. He showed gratitude for this, and at the invitation to visit us for lunch at the Curia, he said he would oblige. There was full commonality of feeling on several issues that we discussed, and I remained with the conviction that we will work very well together for the service of the church. And he said this, he continued, there was a calm humor and mutual understanding about past, present, and future. I left the Casa di Santa Marta convinced that the Pope will gladly count on our collaboration in the vineyard of the Lord. At the end, he helped me with my coat and accompanied me to the door. That added a couple of salutes to me from the Swiss guards here, a Jesuit embrace once again, as the natural way to greet and send off a friend. Wow. And um, I wonder if they discussed this, uh, whether, you know, they were fomenting another war, like they fomented two world wars and escalated the Vietnam War after they killed President Kennedy. I wonder if that was discussed. And uh, here's what Edmund Paris, since we're on Jesuit quotes, said on page nine of his book, The Secret History of the Jesuits. Quote, the public is practically unaware of the overwhelming responsibility carried by the Vatican and its Jesuits in starting the two world wars a situation which may be explained in part by the gigantic finances at the disposition of the Vatican and its Jesuits, giving them power in so many spheres, especially since the last conflict. Quite interesting. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. We're going to talk uh, a little bit more about the Jesuits later on in the show, but first, let me get to uh, President Trump and some of uh, what's going on in the White House and how that relates to a story that's well overlooked, and that's the Clinton body count, which I want to play for you a, a short video on that. Back, uh, I'll be uh, doing that just in a second here. Let me pod that up. Okay, before I play that uh, Clinton body count documentary, which will take up most of the show, and I'm glad because I've got a cold. The weather's been terrible in Southern uh, California. It's going to rain again with 40 mile an hour winds. And I caught a cold, so I'll, um, it's good that I can uh, just say something quickly here and then get to this Clinton body count documentary. And there's a reason I want to do it today. I've done it once before, and I found this one, which is quite interesting. And uh, the reason I did that is recently Donald Trump, I, I, think, I think it was on Super Bowl Sunday, he gave an interview to Bill O'Reilly, and he said something quite interesting. O'Reilly was questioning him about Putin in Russia, and, and Trump said, yes, I respect him, but I'm not sure if I'll get along with him or not. And then O'Reilly jumped in and said, yeah, but how could you respect a cold-blooded killer? And Trump kind of just nodded as he, he went back and forth with his head, and he looked and he said something like this. He said, yes, but we're not so innocent here ourselves. And uh, there are a lot of killers in the world. And uh, O'Reilly said, but yeah, I don't know any government officials that are killers. And Trump, again, his head went back and forth and he said, yeah, but uh, let me tell you something. Look what happened in Iraq and all this. Let me tell you, there are a lot of killers. Now, when O'Reilly said that, I started to think, well, how do they ignore all of the killings involved with the Clintons? I mean, unless there's a really a conspiracy among the mainstream, which I believe there is to hide all this stuff, and to hide so many different things regarding the assassinations of the Jesuit, you know, of all the Jesuits who are involved in assassinating many of our presidents. And an interesting fact about that is when you try to get answers, I used to ask these questions to the, uh, the communications directors of many of the uh, headquarters of the Society of Jesus in this country, and they, they just go, well, that's all conspiracy theory. So I tried to look for anything that would 
counter what I say. And it's completely ignored. I found the Catholic Herald. They come back with some general article saying all these people that talk about conspiracy theories are crazy. The Jesuits are basically good educators, but they never talk about specifics. Just like they never talk about specifics regarding the Clinton body count. So what Bill O'Reilly was saying, he doesn't know any government officials who are killers. Did he ever look at all the 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 people that have been killed around the Clintons and all the suspicious stories? And it's it's just incredible. So there has to be a connection. Now, the idea of Trump, uh, what's what's really uh, kind of like telling me he's involved in this little club himself. Is remember during the campaign he was saying, "I'm going to put Clinton behind bars for all of her activities, giving out all of this, you know, having a private server as she's Secretary of State, hacked by everybody in the world, giving out foreign secrets and intelligence all over the world, and the Democrats did nothing about it. And as soon as Trump got into office, he forgot all of that." And I don't see them pursuing anything that Hillary did, let alone, you know, all these strange murders that take place. And people ask me, well, how do they get away with it? I said, well, if the Jesuits get away with it, and that's their boss, if that's their organist, you know, if they do it, then the Jesuits sanction them to do it too. So when Trump said, yeah, we're not innocent here, he was right. So let's look at some of the specifics, right? The, the 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 stories behind all these people that die when they get close to the Clintons. Now, let's uh, before we do that, let's look at one thing: the a scandal going on now in the White House. What we have going is very perilous. This is very interesting because they're setting up a fifth column, a shadow government right before our very eyes, to create a civil war in this country and disrupt our government to a point where uh, I haven't seen anything like this unless you go back to the days of Lincoln and Douglas and start really understanding the Vatican involvement in our civil war, what they did there. And that's an interesting history that you really have to understand. There was a group called the Knights of the Golden Circle and all of this connection to uh, you know, the, the tearing apart of our country. And they did a very good job. Look how many people died in the Civil War. Incredible. They had brothers killing brothers. So I see the same thing going on today. Right now, we're in a perilous situation. And let me give you an example of what I mean. Recent, we have 60, 60 to 70,000 people now in the NSA and all of these intelligence groups that are spying on everybody. I mean, they, they don't, there's no constitution here. There's no rights here. And now they're spying on high-level people in the Trump administration. These people loyal to Obama or whatever, the Jesuits who want to create this conflict. Well, what they're doing is they spied illegally on Mike Flynn, the uh, uh, Trump's national security advisor, and uh, brought up some things regarding his conversations prior to taking off Trump taking office to the ambassador of Russia and all we know is that he said something about the sanctions and so this was a big deal then supposedly he lied to Vice President Pence who said there was never any conversations and then Trump dismissed him so there's a lot of crazy things going on here Trump yesterday stated that he Flynn was treated badly by the press and he's a good man and my question was why did you get rid of him then so there's a little bit of, there's strange things going on. But the real issue in this story is that what's happening here is that these intelligence officials are spying on the president and his people, which means that they can undermine anything he does. They can rip it apart, rip our country apart, and we don't know who these people are. Now, Right now, Congress and Trump are saying, we're going to find the leakers. And he just stated that this morning. We will find the leakers and they will be prosecuted. Because, yeah, it is a complete violation of uh, 
uh, many USC, you know, code statutes. And this is a this they can't be doing that because, you know, in a in a real world, in a true world, they they have to be honest to the president so he can make decisions and not worry that every phone call he's making is being tapped whether he's talking to the you know they can they can do just about anything they want they can tap everybody well the idea there's a group now filed a lawsuit in washington you have to you probably don't even know about it because the mainstream media doesn't talk about it and they're talking about the over the millions of people that are being monitored as we speak and also now they've included the president in this lawsuit and Mike Flynn in this lawsuit to protect his rights. So we have a shadow government at work which could tear this country apart. That's why I said it's very, very dangerous times we live in. And I wanted to uh, make that statement. So what I decided to do is to say, look, why is Trump overlooking and why has everybody now forgotten about Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation and what Clinton's role in was giving China all of our, you know, basically our technologies to create these ballistic missiles and these uh, these uh, nuclear weapons that China in the 90s was a, you know, back in the dark ages. But thanks to the Clintons, they've given out all of our secrets and look at where China is now. So... The idea that Trump, what he said was, we're not so innocent. I decided to take him up on it and take Bill O'Reilly up on it and ask him to comment on some of the strange murders around the Clintons. And they always seem to get <laughs> whitewashed. And uh, I don't mean to, uh, uh, they always, how about whitewatered? <laughs> Remember that scandal they were involved in? So let's start that. I won't get through all of it. And, uh, I'm going to call on uh, a guy who calls himself Titus Frost. Put this together, and it's quite interesting, because on many occasions I've talked about some of the main people here. Uh, Gary Webb, a journalist who was killed regarding the Mena, Arkansas drug dealings of the Clintons. Then, of course, Vince Foster, a uh, close confidant of Bill Clinton and personal friend ever since they were in the Arkansas days. Just to mention a couple. So let's do that right now and save my voice for another day. Okay, here we go. I got it potted up, I think. The Hillary and Bill Clinton body count documentary. In this video, we're going to discuss the 114 people the Clintons have killed to keep quiet. And here we have Bill and Hillary Clinton making the Masonic sign of silence. And that's a term you can look up on the internet and you'll see lots of other people making this hand gesture telling anyone that might oppose them or might leak information to be silent or they will get killed. And these two aren't kidding because they are going to kill a lot of people. <laughs> I just had to kill a lot of people! And, um... and one of the most prominent people they killed is Gary Webb, and there's a movie out about him, and there's a book, Dark Alliance, which I've read. And it's a must read for anyone watching this video. And Gary Webb exposed the MENA drug operation being run by the CIA out of Little Rock, Arkansas, where Hill and Bill got their start. So there's going to be a lot of deaths and things surrounding Hillary and Bill and the CIA and covering up what Gary Webb exposed on the MENA drug operation, including Gary Webb himself. And he supposedly committed suicide, and we'll get to that later in the video. But this is another person that we will be adding to the Hillary and Bill body count list. And you'll see a familiar pattern around Hillary Clinton and Bill, that your plane might crash, your car might crash, you might commit suicide by shooting yourself in the head multiple times, you might get killed in a robbery where no one actually takes anything, if you oppose these people. It's just a very, very strange pattern that involves 114 people that I have put together in this one documentary. So the list I am using comes from whatreallyhappened.com and I went and verified all the names on that list and found other articles and things on every one of these people, but I have to give this guy a shout out because since Victor Thorne's death, 
he has the best list of the Clinton body count and all 114 that I came up with were also on this guy's list. And I've also heard, I can't remember his name, but I've definitely heard the guy who runs this website on Coast to Coast AM on a bunch of other issues. And that's how I first came across his website to begin with. And he sounds pretty legit in interviews to me. So we're going to start things off with Victor Thorne, who on his 54th birthday, August 1st, 2016, the man who wrote the book on Hillary and Bill, the murder volume, documenting all the people that they've killed over the years, stemming out of Little Rock, Arkansas, covering up the MENA drug operation. This individual, right before she was about to run for office, and he would have definitely had a bunch of more books, in the middle of his writing career, committed suicide by shooting himself. Yeah, right. So that's... Hillary body count victim number one. Okay, I, I got to mention something here before we continue this. Uh, I don't know who Victor Thorne uh, is. Well, I've met him personally a couple times, and this was years ago, at, just after 9-11, at the 9-11 uh, anniversary people would get together and I went uh, several years and would run into Victor Thorne and he was there with this anti 9-11 group and it was kind of a seedy group to be honest with you and the one thing I found about it was that they seemed to be agitating there's a time during the ceremony where they read off all of the 3,000 names and at that point, everybody, even the, the people that were there, you know, looking for the truth, like myself and others, uh, other people there, uh, victims, uh, family members who were definitely wanting 9-11 truth, they would stay silent for this, this time when they're reading the names off. But Victor Thorne's group didn't. And they look kind of crazy, to be honest. They look like drug dealers, to be honest with you. And they, uh, you know, gave off this impression and boy, they ticked off a lot of the firemen, and there were fights and all this stuff. And that's a typical sign of a, a paid group uh, to make all 9-11 truthers seem a bit crazy, right? That's a tactic they use. You're seeing it today with these thugs coming to University of Ber at Berkeley, etc. Paid thugs to uh, disrupt uh, things and make everybody seem uh, like they're, uh, you know, crazy. Okay, you you understand that. So Thorn Thorn was doing that with his group of people. Now I also remember in my early days of reporting, and I was doing a lot of 9/11 stuff. He spread some serious bad rumors about me. Okay, and so I questioned, who is this guy? Who's he working for? And so I don't know what happened to him. They said recently he committed suicide, but that's all I know. So I can't say anything definitive one way or another about him. And he just popped up recently. And many of the other people on this list, uh, I've not, not all 114, but many of the people I've looked into, certain, you know, and it's crazy, the, the Vince Foster killing, Gary Webb, very suspect. So we're going to do that right after the break and come back to this. Uh, I've got a few minutes here. i got a minute here. I do want to mention this. Please go to my website at arcticbeacon.com and you can get shows going back over a decade regarding many of these subjects. Also go to freetonyalamo.com, a website I started. And Tony's an, another victim of uh, the Vatican Jesuits. Uh, they didn't. They tried to kill him. Uh, the FBI guy who was assigned to do that backed out, and he's come forward with that testimony. But they put him in jail. They put him in prison on, char on false charges, and he sits in prison right now. We're trying to get a petition online as well as go to the pardon attorney of Trump to get him released this year. So go to that and read about it. He's another victim of uh, what we talk about here on this show, the Vatican Jesuit uh uh, New World Order, Vatican-led New World Order, back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal.
The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the Supreme, by the Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But stand tall, people. people. Listen, Listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, back for the second half hour of the investigative journal, and let's get back to that documentary on. The Clinton body count. Uh, here we go. So before the Whitewater scandal, Hillary and Bill were involved in another scandal in Branson that was very similar and had the same circle of friends getting rich from it. And the lawyer that represented the opposing side, lawyer Donald Joe Adams, up and committed suicide, wouldn't you know it, and right in the middle of all this. So Clinton body count, two. The next individual, John Ashey, was revealing the Clintons were taking bribes from a Chinese citizen, N.G. Lap Seng. And John Ashey, at the time, was General Assembly President of the United Nations, and he died when his bench press bar fell on his throat and crushed his larynx, despite the fact that he worked out regularly and never had any sort of such issues before. So, John Ashey, your Clinton body count number three... And as they always say, serial killers kill those who are near to them. And you can see Hillary shaking his hand right there, shaking hands with death. 
Number four of people murdered by the Clintons is Robert Bates, the pilot Barry Seal's aircraft mechanic. And we'll get to Barry Seal later in the video. But Robert Bates died from a overdose of mouthwash. And even though the local authorities called it a homicide, there was no investigation. Hillary got off completely scot-free. And I picked this picture because this is what is called duping delight. Candy L. Baugh is the next victim of the Clintons. And this was an attorney who was representing a Mr. Lassiter in a case involving financial misconduct. And Mr. Lassiter would later be arrested for drug charges. And he was a close friend and advocate of Bill and Hillary Clinton while they were governors in Arkansas. And Gandhi Baugh's partner in the law firm also committed suicide a month later. In 1996, Admiral Jeremy Borda, instead of going on Newsweek and testifying against the Clinton's plan to downsize the Navy, decided to go home and shoot himself twice in the chest with two different guns. Therefore, committing suicide according to all the official reports and it was over not being allowed to wear a v-pin for serving in vietnam or valor or something of that nature which is total nonsense he was killed by the clintons to keep him quiet once again body count number six this individual ron brown the former dnc chairman was killed in 1996 on a plane on his way to bosnia and later, his lawyer was killed by gunshot a week later, and the aircraft controller who was in charge for his flight was suicided. And you can see here Bill Clinton at the funeral for Ron Brown, and he's laughing and joking until he's seen by the camera right there. He's like, oh, uh-oh, put on the sad face. I just killed this guy. I can't be seen laughing about it. Of course, the guy to the right didn't get the message because he's still laughing and joking things up while Bill's now faking tears. And this just goes to show you that these people can't keep their stories straight and they're just completely obvious. Bill and Hillary could probably kill someone right out in the middle of the public and no one would do anything because they're members of the establishment, they're CIA puppets, and they're totally subservient to the Council on Foreign Relations. It's a total sham. This is a three-for-one deal with all three people involved being killed. Therefore, body counts up to nine. The next name on the list is James Bunch, who had a black book of VIP Johns in Arkansas when Bill Clinton would have been there. And James shot himself, and the list and all the documents in his place vanished. So you can add this to the Clinton body count as number ten, as this is another mysterious death surrounding them. In a pattern of the Clintons killing people who have information about other people they've killed, Eric Butera had info on Mary Mahoney's death, another individual who we'll get to later that the Clintons likely had killed. And Eric Butera was sent into a crack house to buy drugs for the police, and the crackheads beat him to death. And his mother was awarded originally $100 million for this, but a judge later cut that down to a million. Another individual, Caetano Carani, died in 1994, right after he had filmed a shooting at the White House. And he died, conveniently for the Clintons, just before testifying, and all of his film disappeared afterwards from food poisoning. And you can definitely add this to the Clinton body count as number 12. Danny Casalero was working on a project called The Octopus, which was involved with a software called Promise that the U.S. government had stolen from a private company, put backdoor software in to spy on everyone with, to look through financial transactions, and then given it out to other people for free, other governments and companies, so they could spy on everyone with their backdoor access. Danny Casalero stumbled upon a network of people that made a whole bunch of money from the Iran-Contra affairs. And he was writing a book with all the documents that was going to expose all these people for their financial connections to the Iran-Contra affair. And he was found dead in a bathtub with his tendons sliced. And he, cut, he killed himself by gunning both wrists. But the first wrist he cut, he severed the tendons on, therefore making 
cutting the other wrist than possible, so he couldn't have killed himself, but that's what it was ruled anyways. And this lady was just killed on 3-3-16 in her sleep, and she was claiming that Hillary was responsible for the Honduras coup that has turned Honduras into one of the most dangerous places on the planet right now. And Berta Gutierrez just happened to mysteriously die in the middle of the night, despite being somewhat reasonably healthy. So you can add her to the list as Hillary and Bill body count victim number 14. Next on the list is William Colby, and you could probably add this guy to the CIA and the Clinton body count list because this guy had a lot of enemies. I mean, you want to talk about having a lot of enemies, this guy had a lot of enemies. And he was found dead in his canoe from drowning or near his canoe without a life jacket on after he decided to go canoeing right in the middle of his dinner because all his food was left on the table as if he just got up in the middle of a meal and decided to go canoeing in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, right. This guy definitely got killed. There was plenty of motives why he should have been killed by all, not should have, why they would have wanted him to be killed, I should correct. And, you know, he also did a lot of bad things as well in Vietnam. So this guy probably had it coming and he definitely was murdered so you can add him to the clinton cia body count as number 15 supposedly when bill was attorney general in arkansas he had an affair with the 26 year old suzanne coleman and when she was seven months pregnant she supposedly committed suicide by shooting herself through the back of her head uh yeah and supposedly the kid was bill's kid so bill not only killed a 26 year old woman he also killed his own child that was seven months old in the womb. The next two individuals I put on the same slide because they both were trained death witnesses and there's a whole bunch of trained death witnesses that get killed. One of them was Gregory Collins who died from a gunshot blast to the face that they called a suicide and Keith Coney was chased down on his motorcycle and killed in what was ruled a traffic accident. And both of those guys were about to testify on the train death with that took place. So you can add those to the Clinton body count. So that's plus two, giving us 19 so far. Three more of the Clinton body count victims include L.J. Davis, who is a reporter investigating the Clinton scandals. His notes were stolen and he was attacked in his Little Rock, uh, Arkansas hotel room. David Dry was killed in 99 uh, while he was producing the Clinton Chronicles, who a bunch of other people have been attacked over or killed. We'll get to some of them later. Daniel A. Duco, C. Chairman of Leadership 2000, and a Democrat National Committee main fundraising effort. He was in charge of the inflow of money from China, and he accidentally died when his bicycle crashed and he struck his head on concrete, not once, but twice. And five Navy operators died in a Hawkeye crash off of Italy after their plane was waved off from landing on an aircraft carrier. And all of them had been Clinton's bodyguards on his trip to the Roosevelt car aircraft carrier like a week before. And interestingly, another aircraft crashed with the other three people that had been escorting Clinton on that trip. So all eight people that were Clinton bodyguards died in two separate crashes. The names of these five naval operators is not yet known, but you can add another plus five to the Clinton body count for these five guys. The next victim, number 28 on the Clinton body count, Herschel Friday, a Clinton fundraiser and attorney from Arkansas who died in a mysterious plane explosion that has never been explained in 1994 during the Clinton presidency. Vincent Foster, one of the most known Clinton body count victims, grew up with Hillary in the same town, and he was a partner with her, as you can see here, in her law firm back in Arkansas. And Vincent Foster was investigating and about to testify before Congress regarding the Clinton's finances, of which he had intimate knowledge, when he shot himself in a park and his dead body was found with no gun, a fake suicide note. Clinton body count number 29. All right, now we're about to add nine to the list. Starting with Aldo Francoia, Secret Service agent, 
Captain Kevin N. Ernest, Captain Kimberly Joe Weilhauer, Second Lieutenant Benjamin T. Hall, Staff Sergeant Michael J. Smith Jr., Senior Airman Rick L. Merritt, Staff Sergeant Michael R. York, Senior Airman Billy R. Ogston, Airman Thomas A. Stevens, who all died on a C-130 carrying the presidential limos when it crashed mysteriously, and there's still no explanation for the crash, and I'm not sure if this is a direct thing, but I'm pretty sure that the Secret Service agent probably had something on Bill, which is why the plane went down. In another convenient crash for the Clintons, four Marine One helicopter pilots, the guys that fly the Air Force One version of the helicopter, the Marine One it's called, and 15 other people, I'm not even adding to the count list, died. So we're only going to count the four pilots in a V-22 crash that supposedly happened when the V-22 caught fire in midair and then crashed. And these guys flew around with Bill all the time and probably had dirt on them, which is why this happened. Kathy Ferguson was a witness in the Paula Jones case who had packed her bags to go on a trip and then all of a sudden mysteriously shot herself. And she was also married to the Arkansas State Trooper, Danny Ferguson, that used to bring supposedly women to Bill Clinton for him to have sex with, and the officer would stand watch while Clinton had sex with those women. And Kathy Ferguson, the wife who was going to testify against Bill, packed her bags, and then shot herself in the head. Dwayne Garrett, a talk show radio host and big-time Democratic fundraiser who defrauded people and told a bunch of people he was going to meet some friends at an airport and then was found floating under the Golden Gate Bridge a few hours later. And there was a lot of rumors that he had information on fraudulent fundraising by the Clintons. So you can add him to the Clinton body count list as number 44. Remember all that controversy about Obama not saluting properly as he got off the stupid Marine One? Well, Bill Clinton at least salutes properly. And then he has those pilots that he salutes killed. So I don't know what's worse to you, but that's actually worse to me. Killing people instead of saluting them properly. It's probably actually worse. And Corporal Eric X. Fox was shot in the head Therefore, all of the Marine One pilots who flew with Clinton were killed off. On April 28, 2000, while Clinton was in the White House, Carlos Gigliotti, an infrared technologies expert who had studied Waco and said that the FBI had actually fired shots on infrared, and the FBI came out and said that those shots were something else that doesn't make sense. And this is another person who died from a self-inflicted gunshot adding him to the Clinton body count, which now stands at 46. A lot of porn stars end up going into the call girl profession or prostitution. And this one, Judy Gibbs, was a Bill Clinton call girl. And Bill used to brag about her when he flew over her house. And to keep her quiet, she was knocked unconscious in her house, and her house was burnt to the ground. Therefore, add them to the Bill Clinton body list at number 47, Judy Gibbs. And another four Clinton bodyguards died mysteriously. We don't know what they had on the Clintons, but the crash site was covered up and any documentary evidence was destroyed or taken somewhere. No one knows what happened to it. The military intervened. And all four of these people, Staff Sergeant Haney, Marine Sergeant Sable, Major Barkley, Captain Reynolds can be added to the Clinton body count, which is now at 48 thus far. Next on the list is journalist Michael Hastings, who is investigating Benghazi and Clinton's role. And his car looks like it was hacked, and the accelerator accelerated him into a tree at high speed. And lots of people have heard about this guy and this mysterious death. And this is definitely one you can add to the Clinton body count at number 49, Michael Hastings. No one's caused more plane crashes than the Clintons. I'm surprised she didn't cause this one as well. But if you get too close to her, your plane may just crash as well. So we're talking about Stanley Hurd and his attorney, Steve Dixon, who got into one plane. It took off. It had issues. Landed. So they got into a new plane which then took off and crashed. 
So two planes had issues. The second one crashed, killing the guy who served under the Clintons for their health care advisory committee and also treated all of the Clintons' family members for health reasons. So he would have had a lot of interesting things on them. And now you can add him to their body count at number 51. John Hillier, an NBC cameraman, was killed by his dentist when he had a heart attack, even though he was perfectly healthy. And Hillier had worked on the Clinton Chronicles and some other videos that were highly critical of the Clinton crime family. Stanley Huggins had been a partner with Hillary Clinton when she was a lawyer, and he was investigating the Madison Guarantee and had a 300-page report ready to go when he flew up to the Northeast to a university and checked into his dorm room only to die of viral pneumonia shortly thereafter. And the Clintons ordered Janet Reno to seal the hospital records from the widow of Stanley Huggins. So you can add Stanley Huggins to the Clinton body count at 53. Next up is journalist Sandy Hume, son of Britt Hume, who was investigating how the Clinton White House used journalists to dig up information on their critics and was a investigative journalist highly critical of the Clinton White House. And this individual was killed, supposedly committed suicide, and they brought the same doctor that ruled Vince Foster's death was a suicide, Dr. Alan Berman, to rule that Sandy Hume's death was a apparent suicide, and all of the records have been sealed. And what's known as the train deaths, this first individual, Kevin Ives, had his skull crushed and then his body run over by a train, and all for likely uncovering what was a drop site that was part of the MENA drug operation that was a part of the Iran-Contra affairs. And this individual was killed, and a whole bunch of other people are killed to keep the murder of this individual quiet. Killed with Kevin Ives was Don Henry, who was stabbed in the back and then run over by a train. And he also had probably uncovered what was a drop site as part of the Mina Dog operation. And his death and Kevin's death is called the train death, and a lot of witnesses to that end up getting killed as well. John Jones, in April of 2016, the lawyer for Julian Assange, and was helping with Julian Assange, who runs WikiLeaks, to not get extradited to the United States, mysteriously jumped in front of a commuter train in the United Kingdom, a country with more surveillance cameras than any other country on the planet, and somehow there's no video of this. So I'm adding this guy to the Clinton body count at number 57 because WikiLeaks has released some of the most damning information on the Clintons that has come out in the past few years, and this guy just got killed in April of this year. The next individual on our list is John F. Kennedy Jr. And the Kennedy family seems to have a lot of bad luck surrounding them. This individual's plane crash just off Martha's Vineyard and all of the media reports that were put about about it were faked. And it was a very suspicious plane crash. And I've talked to a lot of people that actually did some of the work getting the material out of the water because they live on Cape Cod. And he was about to announce his run for Senator of New York and just before that, his plane crashed, and then Hillary Clinton became senator of New York. Two more people Hillary Clinton likely had killed by calling it in on that cell phone of hers is Jordan Kettleson, who was a witness to the train deaths, who was found shot to death in the front seat of his pickup truck, and Johnny Franklin Lawhorn Jr., who was the son of Franklin Lawhorn Sr., who had found a box of documents proving the Clintons were connected to the Whitewater scandal and the Madison guarantee and $27,000 cashier's check made up to Bill Clinton. And they died, or Johnny Franklin Lawhorn Jr., the son died, and his friend, and they hit a telephone pull yeah. at a high rate of speed, much like the Michael Hastings death. In this video, you can see Sean Lucas right there. And Sean Lucas went to the DNC to serve them papers on behalf of the Bernie Sanders supporters for their corruption against Bernie Sanders and basically forcing Hillary to be the DNC candidate. And they went there to serve Debbie Weisserman Solch, who ended up having to resign because of this. And this was before the WikiLeaks leaks. And then this 
individual was found dead in his apartment despite being in perfectly good health by his girlfriend. So he just died randomly, and then because he died, he wasn't able to testify when they said that they did not serve them papers properly. So later, when he could have testified to back up what he did here, he was already dead conveniently for the Clintons. You can add him to their count at number 61. Next is the case of Mary Katie Mahoney, a White House intern who was 25 years old and was killed by being shot five times execution style by likely a silenced pistol. And killed with her was her Starbucks co-staff because she wasn't at the White House when she was killed. She was just working at a Starbucks nearby. It was Aaron Goodrich, 18 years old, and Emery Evans, 25, all shot execution style. Just before it was released that it was Monica Lewinsky, Paula Jones had made hints that a M named intern was going to come out with information and then Mary Katie Mahoney gets killed. And of course, they say the Starbucks was hit as part of a robbery, yet four grand was still remaining in the store and none of the victims had anything removed and no one nearby said they heard anything and this is in Georgetown and oddly enough this very Starbucks is also visited often by George Stephanopoulos, Hillary Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. So that's three more bodies you can add to the Clinton body count making it a total of 64. Next on the list is Lieutenant General David J. McLeod who was assembling evidence against Bill Clinton when his plane was sabotaged and crashed. And this would be Clinton body count number 65. And now we're about to add three more to this list to get to 68. Christine M. Merzian was a Clinton staffer and another intern with the name M who was killed just after Paula Jones made that hint. And this lady was beaten to death near Georgetown University. And then you have Gordon Maddinson, who was a Clinton associate and was shot in the head, yet that was declared a suicide, and that was in 1997. And the last one is Keith McCaskill, another witness to the train deaths who died on November 10th, 88. And supposedly Keith had information on the Mina drug running and the Henry and Ives murder, and he was stabbed 113 times. And before that, he had told his family that someone was out to get him. Okay, uh, we've up to number 68. Quite in one would be enough, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, maybe we'll finish that list tomorrow on Friday. But thanks for coming by. We'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Visit crosstheborder.org, C R O S S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book. The rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book the rapture will be canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, 
the rapture will be canceled. That's crossthebordor.org.